Hey guys, just getting set up. Give me a couple seconds. Hey guys, July 11th, let's get into it. That's, I thought I would have had that up already, but I was sharing the screen. There we go, boom. So let's get into this. Let's drill into these levels, start doing it. So I, I, there's a lot to go over here, in my opinion. And I think the easiest way to do it is just to start at the beginning. And let's get into these. So first and foremost, I don't really use those levels for there. So we're just kind of talk about what's going on here. If we look at the levels that we're hitting, we're hitting the same levels over and over again, right? But this breakout bar never got tested. And it was Monday, July 10th. Never got really got tested, right? Broke out, never really got tested. All right. You come down here to this reversal on Monday at 3.15 in the morning. This is, we're just looking at the futures for a second. Never got tested. All right, so 44.10 never really got tested. You were down here and you held that 4410. You held all this nonsense that was in here. Same area you tested in before and then you went higher. So we are going higher and we are pushing higher, but you still have some levels up here uh, that you're just not able to get through. This is obviously major resistance right up here, that 4500. And then they just been, they've been walking us down. Now, I don't know that you're going to make a higher high today because you're going into CPI tomorrow and people might just not want to be involved before CPI, which just makes sense, right? You might not want to be involved for that. So if we look at this, we could stay range bound between something like 44.56, 44.76. What's going to get me excited is staying above key levels. Now, for me, I'd like to see the sediment change. I'm starting to see it change some. When I look at my clouds, I'm starting to get some kind of change in here. We're above the 20 EMA. My one cloud's flipped colors already. You know, that's usually a good sign. The longer it stays that way, it will start pulling the other one up. But I don't know that you're going to get that umph today ahead of CPI. I think you might just see people wait and see what CPI is going to do and then kind of go from there. You, know, you have two schools of thought here. You know, a lot of people are saying CPI is going to be bad, higher than expected. I, I, I don't see how, but, you know, anything could happen. You know, anything could happen the way they calculate it. So I'd watch this very carefully. I'd watch those levels. If we start taking this out, I'd be concerned. For me, I think we're setting up a head and shoulders where you're, you're up here, right? And there's your left shoulder. And then there's your head. So I'm wondering if we're going to get something like that today uh, where you can't break a level, comes back down, right? Does something like this tomorrow and then goes, um, that's where my head is, but I never know what to expect. I'm just saying that if I was to tell you what I think happens, I think we sell down at some point today. I just think we do. And I'm not saying how we, you know, I don't know why people are going to want to hold winners into and take the risk tomorrow. Like why even take the risk? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So we'll see, unless they think they're not going to be able to get back in. That would be the only reason. But if you look at the NQ and you look at our levels here, same thing, lower high, lower high, right? Can't rally, lower low, lower low. Now the lower lows are holding. Obviously, if we come here and take a look at that, 
Uh, that did hold, came undercut, couldn't even get another follow through bar, rallies, comes back. So that 15.1 looks like a key level. And then you're kind of wedged in here, 15.177, 15.236, 68. So you've got a bunch of nonsense in here, right? But at the same time, if we just drill back out of that, you're not making any real progress. So if we clean all this off and just take a look at this, this was kind of interesting. Go take a look at a four hour chart. Okay, so what do we have here on a four hour chart, right? It's kind of makes things look a little different. So I always tell you to look at different time frames. So I have this trend right here. And then what do we have? Well, then we have this trend right here. All right, well, we broke that trend, right? Okay, so when we broke this trend, Right here, what'd we do? A lot of people don't look at things like this. I look at things like this. So here's my trend line. I tried to break back over that trend line right here, and I was unable to. So really, what that's going to do is just tell me the same thing, that I need to get above that level, that 15. Let's call it 15.4 uh, in order to get back on track. But if I get rid of all this now and say, okay, well, Going back to me, okay, well, what's this telling me right here on, on as far as four hours? Well, this is kind of interesting because you're forming a cup, right? If you really look at this on four hours and you get kind of goofy with it. Now, a lot of people are going to look at this and say, it's not a cup. I don't really care what, what people think, to be quite honest with you. Um, the sooner you stop caring what people think, the happier you'll be. That's a cup, okay? So if I look at it from that perspective and I say that's a cup, and then I come here and go, well, that's a cup, right? And maybe clone these because you're, you should always want the same trajectory, even if it doesn't fit perfectly. But look what fits. So I've got a four-hour cup and handle just sitting there. That's how I view it. So what do, what do I really need to have happen for that to execute? Well, technically, people are going to say, oh, I need to get up to here. I think if you flip this level, you're pretty much you're executed. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. So I, I would not sleep on this. I would spend some time if I was very interested in fundamental analysis like I am. Uh, I, you know, the majority of ideas and thematic ideas that have come out I come from my research. If you're in the community, you know this already, that, that I'm hyper focused on this kind of stuff. And because, you know, the technicals will tell you when fundamentals tell you where, they tell you what, right? It's very different. Anyway, if you take a look at like Taiwan Semi, you look at that report and you start digging into it, it's pretty glaring where the money's going to go. To me, it is anyway. But if you take a look at these kinds of names today, I pay attention to them. I'm going to get asked about Tesla. I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, we shorted this yesterday. It was a gap fill, played out perfectly. I don't see anything about that telling me that I need to do anything differently till I gap fill, find some kind of turnaround, go from there. This is one of the charts that I run that tell me where, you know, what names to be in, what names not to be in. See this cross right here? That is not something I want to buy until I am over that, right? I might whack it around if it comes down to like 62 to trade it. But unless I'm over that cross right there, that 275, I have zero interest zero. And this is from somebody that has very long dated options calls on this stock. Um, and I think, you know, I think we do get to that three, you know, three handle test, but I need to clear that. There's too many other names that just look great out there. I would avoid the larger cap names until they get it together. You can see it here with Apple as well. Uh, the breaking down, right? I had a trade in that. I think we got blown out of it yesterday. Uh, I think we made like eight or nine, ten dollars or something. I have to go take a look. And then, you know, some of these names just want to just want to watch here, guys. Like they're they're not really setting up for success. I mean, this is really a bear flag. Now you're popping today, but I, I'm not buying what they're selling here. Um, the names that I'm most focused on that I would tell you to focus on is I would focus on these kinds of names, like micro strategies. You know, this is one, again, if you're in the community or even if you just get the free newsletter link in description, I've gone over this name a hundred different times. Let's get rid of those lines before I confuse people. People start saying, what the heck are they? Um, I've gone over this Saturday. I keep hammering this home. You guys have to make your own decisions, of course. But when you really start breaking this down is how we've gotten tighter and tighter in here. And the fact that 
the company was trading at $150 before they even bought Bitcoin and that their Bitcoin holdings are roughly right where this is right now. I mean, you know, I think someone came out and put a 490 target price on it today. Again, fundamentals tell us, you know, what, right? Technicals tell us when. Okay. So, I mean, that, if you think about it that way, you'll make your life a lot easier. So I think that five and a quarter handle, I, I think we see that by the end of the year. That's my, that's where I was when we bought it at 340. So I think it's what we paid 340, right? If you're in the room, just, I think it was 340, but I think you can see 61% this year. I think we have 200 points. So it was worth the risk. And obviously we've done exceptionally well with it. I think these Bitcoin names continue. You know, we're all waiting for this GBTC news to hit on this appellate court. Uh, it'll add $4 billion directly to GBTC. But what it will do as well is it's going to open up MicroStrategy's ability to spin off Bitcoin into a separate entity if they want. It's going to allow all these companies to start really mass producing like Mara, Riot. They're going to have to up production. It's going to be kind of crazy, in my opinion. So something to think about there. I don't see the sense in doing a lot. Uh, with those, just watch those. And I think they'll do exceptionally. Uh, I think they'll do exceptionally well. And we'll go from there. So keep that in mind. But I do like those names. I do like those Bitcoin names. Rivian, I like a lot still. You know, you're kind of just bouncing around in here. And now you got this wonky doji. I don't know that you're going to do anything there today. CVNA has just been on absolute fire. Uh, yet negative news today on you know, how pricing of autos is dropping and the stock could just could care less. So something to think about there. I think that's pretty important. I mean, when a stock just does not even care, you, you want to pay attention to it. Let's get through these and go from there. Yep. So DraftKings, uh, I've been watching. I don't have any position in it. Uh, the gaming stocks are seeing a lot of um, we're seeing a lot of upgrades, and yeah, that's definitely setting up to go higher. I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think anybody would think looking at that any differently. Um, it was pretty decent volume the other day too. Like you look at that volume bar, so you broke out there. Uh, it's pretty powerful that move. I mean, you keep getting these pullbacks, right? You break out. And then you pull back and then you break out, pull back. I mean, you're doing it over and over again. And I, I don't see any reason to think that that's going to stop. I mean, that's one heck of a base. The question is, where do you get to? And, you know, you start looking at, well, where could you run into resistance? 34, 35. You start looking at these little points and saying, well, these could be areas of, you know, supply. And they absolutely could. So, but that's a long way up. And I think that has potential. I really do. It's not something that I would, uh, it's not something I'd be playing with. So I'd watch them. I, I would not sleep on that. If I was interested in that name, I'd rather have like a, a sideways bar an inside bar here. You know, something like that. And then have something like this that I could work off of. Uh, I, obviously, I don't know that I'm going to get that, but that's what I would like. That's what I would like with even like CVNA. I, you know, I don't know that I'm going to get that. I'm starting to get that with Rivian where I'm going to kind of build sideways here. Usually, if you have a doji like this, you just don't explode or break down. You kind of bounce around a little bit and confuse everybody. And I think that's what you're going to get there today. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I, that's where my head would be with that name. Now, UPST is one that we've been playing in the in the room. Uh, I think it looks great. I think it looks absolutely great. Uh, we bought it at 38 bucks. I'll clean all this off. Um, we paid 38 for it, and you can just see the levels in here very clear, clear as day. And once you got through, that was it. And really what they did was, you know, they tested, failed, tested, made it look like it was going to fail again, forms this hammer right and then tries to get over makes a higher high in there it looks like it's about to get over and then boom just they just rip it and now look at it and 
Now, there's a lot of expectations into this, but this has massive potential. You know, someone doesn't lend them $3 billion to go and figure out what they're going to go and do uh, to go make loans unless they've really done their homework. You just don't write a check like that. Uh, and that's when that, that happened. I think we were back here at like 20 bucks when that happened. And it's, it's up 100% from there. Um, I, I think this has massive potential. I really do. I think that when you start clearing some of these levels and you start looking at it, that this just has absolutely massive potential. And, you know, it's not one I would sleep on. So keep that in mind. 55, 24. I think that's very realistic. I'm just chopping it up just by looking at support and resistance. I really don't even need these, but you know, they're, they're laying over pretty nicely. If I take a look at this on a 15 minute, look how perfect these are. I mean, every time I got to the eight, look what happens. I mean, it's perfect. So I, I like UPST a lot. Out of the names you just went over, John, that's the one I'm in. DFLI. I, I guess. I don't know. Why is it moving? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. It's not, that's not really my kind of trade. Um, but you're welcome to tell me why it's moving. Uh, ASML, you know, you, it's not probably, it's probably going to be weaker than the other ones just because of uh, the capacity constraints coming out of Taiwan semi. I, I do like the name. I don't like the 12, 22 cross right here. That doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, it's the way it is. Uh, MDB, we had a position in and it turned into a loss. Dip mark. Um, what's it telling me now? A couple of things that I don't do. I don't buy stocks that are declining like this after 70. I don't buy those. Now, that said, you stuck in here. You didn't break down. You cracked yesterday. Now you have this piercing pattern right here. I don't know if they're going to give me that piercing pattern or not here now. So, but now I've got this, uh, this piercing pattern sitting right there. And I look at that and go, okay, well, that's kind of interesting because that's usually a turning point. So if I was interested in that, I'd probably use something like that to make a determining factor. Right. Can I get through that? And really, what's that going to do? Well, I got to get through this control bar. Right. So I have to get through, you know, 404. Yeah. I mean, could you? Yeah, you could. Um, it could. I don't know. I, it's not really my kind of trade. Where's my volume? No one's paying attention to it. I think there's better names out there. Um, I, I own Meta. I thought it was good. You know, a lot of people are already complaining. Um because of, uh, you know, Zuckerberg and, you know, they're already being muted and censored. And, you know, you're not, look, I think what he's doing there is really smart with threads. One, he's making it non-political, right? I mean, there's no hashtags, there's nothing trending. And there's, so he got rid of all the trending nonsense. So you're not, no one's just looking for that trending stuff and you're not looking at hashtags. So if somebody's on your stuff, they're going to stay on your stuff. It makes you a lot stickier as someone that creates content. I don't have threads. I own uh, Meta. Um, I think we're going to get through here. That's how I view the world. I think this gets through. I think that, that it's a direct threat to Twitter. I think it's more of a direct threat than we think it is. Because here's the thing about it, right? They got all these engineers from Twitter to come over, which is what they did after he fired them. Um, and I don't think he really thought that all the way through, but maybe he did. Maybe he didn't have an option. Now, if I look at this, you've had a huge move. And what are you going to do? You're going to call the top? I, I have a hard time doing that. I mean, if you didn't call the bottom, you're not calling the top, right? So I think he's going to get it together. And I think it's going to be a powerhouse, frankly. I think he's going to do everything that Twitter does. If Twitter starts paying content creators, he's going to pay content creators. If Twitter starts long form video, he's going to do long form video, right? That's what I think is going to happen there. And he's very good at stealing ideas. I mean, you got to give it to him. You know, he doesn't really, he's not, he's not a creator. You know, it's not really what he does. So, 
I mean, he took Snapchat and destroyed them. He's got a history of it. Knows how to buy. It. Knows knows how to make an acquisition. Look at Instagram. Look at you know um, what's that app? We something that everybody uses all over the world to chat. So I mean, he knows how to make an acquisition, but he's not really a builder. But I think it has massive potential. I really do. Um, essentially, you're adding a Twitter to Meta, which is huge. Starbucks, it doesn't really seem to be able to get out of its own way. Um, yeah, I, I thought something I'd go near here, Tom. I mean, I don't really see the reason. You know, maybe they have good numbers. Maybe they don't. I mean, last time they had good numbers. Nobody cared. Everybody sold the stock. And they kind of have some, they kind of have some brand issues they're going to have to deal with. I don't know how he's going to deal with that. You know, it went from being like this, you know, like cool company to go get your coffee at to like just this Globo coffee place. It changed a lot. You used to go in there, grab a cup of coffee or whatever, and maybe you grab something else to eat. And now you're sitting there waiting for a cup of coffee while everybody else makes them for the drinks that they already ordered and they're lining up their drinks. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I think he's got a real issue there. And um, I don't know how they fix that. I, I really don't. But if you're looking at that technically, I mean, how can you get involved with that? You know, you're making these higher highs. And then all of a sudden you got like this left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline. Do I really want to be in there playing around with that? You know, probably not. I probably don't. Um, I, I probably don't want to do that, right? I, I don't know. I mean, it's not really my kind of play. I can already tell that it's got things I don't like. Like here, if I take a look at this, I can already tell that I'm below all these just by where the stock is. So I can't get above the 12. I can't get above the 22. I can't get above the 55. I'm below the 50 on RSI. There's nothing like redeeming about it. Now, you also have to understand, Paul, the way I trade, I, I wouldn't buy that, right? So if I'm not going to buy that, I'm just not going to buy that because I'm not going to try to see, oh, am I going to hold here or not? That's not how I usually trade. So that's not my kind of trade, right? I think you're better. I think you have money better spent in other areas, my friend. I think we do have it okay. What's up, Cam? I think we're going higher. I personally think that Sox is going higher. I think after looking at, after really digging into the report yesterday on Taiwan Semi, and a lot of people don't look at that report. They don't really dig into it. Um, you know, Goldman put Goldman put like a 30 page research report out on that June sales. Uh, that's a really big deal, that report. And I don't think people really get it, but whatever. I, I mean, hit look, that's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into it. If you look at this right here, right? I mean, all you've been doing is working off the overbought. That's all you're doing. You have this huge flag. Now, we had a real nice trade in this at like 14 uh, in the SOXL, right? I think we bought that at like 14, 15, something like that. And um, it broke out and then we got to this, right? I think I've walked everybody through this. Um, we got to this third standard deviation and I'm like, you know what? We just might want to take money off the table because we're up so much so fast. And it usually, you know, when you hit like a third standard deviation, you usually do not keep going. I mean, that's just common sense, but you're forming this flag in here and you started to work them off. Right. So here was the second, right. Then we broke the second standard deviation. Now we're at the first standard deviation. I mean, it's worked this all off to the point where you could get back up here again. Right. So then you go here and take a look at this on the daily. Let's get rid of all that again. And just look at the socks. Well, I have a head and shoulders right here. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Here's my neckline. I didn't break my neckline. So I think a lot of this had to do with Taiwan Semi. So I look at this SOXL, and let's go back to the socks and answer your question. I, I have a hard time believing that this is just going to roll over. I, I think we're just consolidating, setting up for the next lift. That's what I think we're doing, right? That's where my head is. You know, I don't know how else to say it. 
but that's what that's what I think is going on there. I I I don't know that I would um I don't know that I would bet against the Sox here. I don't think I would. So you have to see what CPI does tomorrow. Uh UNH I'd avoid. I, I mean the chart does not look great. It's rolling over. What's up, Michael? Yeah, I I actually like um MSTR have a position in there. Uh, I think everybody's to fall. I don't think they're going to fall. I think they're going to do the exact opposite. If you look at how the loans are going, well, go look at how the loans are structured on those regional banks. They're actually getting better uh, retention on loan growth than large banks. Uh, Riot, I, you know, Riot, I like. Uh, I took an overnight position. I'm down in it right now. I like that a lot. I'm, I'm probably not going to do anything with it. Just sit with it, see how it trades for a couple of days here, to be quite honest. But um, I, I like Ryan a lot because I think that it's going to catch up tomorrow. That's what I think happens. Um, Mars, you know, the, these both names are just bouncing around as Bitcoin bounces around. Uh, micro strategies, I, we went over. Uh, the CLSK, that was a great looking chart the other day. And, you know, you had to break out of that 515 level right here. There was somebody in the room that was trading this. And it looks great to me. I mean, I, I think you're heading higher. I think you're heading a lot higher. You know, as long as Bitcoin keeps going, 680 seems very realistic. So I do think that those names keep pushing. CFLT. Yeah, I mean, that's a great looking name. So you're trading up, you're pulling back, you're going sideways. I mean, it's got everything you're looking for except volume. I'd love to see volume come in, but we just don't have that yet, do we? We don't really have any of that. So I'd like to see some of that, but I just don't have any. So I'd probably hold off there. I don't see a squeeze coming at all in there, Ed. I don't see a squeeze coming at all there. I see the exact opposite. GNRC, it's just weak. And this is coming from someone that owns long data calls. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know. What, what, why? I don't, you know, I don't really have a lot of volume. I'm going in the earnings and I already gap filled and failed. Uh, I don't know that I'd go there. Oh, you're welcome, brother. Anytime. Zillow, Sophie. So Zillow and these names, they all look like they're setting up. Redfin. All of them. They all look the same. This is the one that makes the most sense to me. Chart wise, haven't broken out, started to reverse yesterday. Zillow just seems like it's gotten a little ahead of itself. It has this different kind of pattern. I don't really like this kind of pattern. Um, this I like because you know, I, I've gotten to this level and I'm setting up. It, it's a little different. So I, I don't know that I'd be playing Zillow here. Um, what's, what's going to be the next catalyst, you know, so we have to figure that out. Disney, I'd avoid. I, I mean, John, I just don't know. I, I saw someone else talking about this yesterday. I mean, you're just catching a falling dagger. Like what you're going to stop the rain. You know what I mean? I like, I, I'm not, I wasn't trying to knock the guy when we were having a conversation about it, but I was looking at it going, okay, I'm about ready to break a decade support level. And you want me to try to buy that here and hold that? No, if he can't figure it out, if Iger can't figure out how to turn this around, they're going to break the company up eventually. Like Iger, if Iger can't turn it around, then, then we have issues. And he does not seem to be able to turn this thing around yet. So I don't know if it's like turning a big ship because you have so much in production already. Um, I don't know what the, you know, what they're going to do, but you know, they've, they lost their core audience. It's a real problem. They got to figure out how they're going to get their core audience back or, you know, they're just going to keep, you know, dropping. I mean, it's just that simple. Someone will replace them. They'll get it. You know, and that's what's happening. People are, they're just getting replaced. Um, I don't think you can possibly do another Marvel movie. I mean, there's so many, they're out of so many ideas. They're going to different universes now, but, and there's nothing really there that people are saying I have to go and watch. 
So I, I don't know. I don't know how they fix their reputation. And, and candidly, I wouldn't even go. I, I just don't know that I would go near it. I was excited when Iger came back because I thought he'd make sweeping changes. And so far, I've seen him do dumb things like sue Florida. And I have no idea what he's even thinking instead of trying to work with them. So. MS, MNSO, AI, NYCB. So I know a lot of people are playing AI and they like the name. Um, I, I would just be real careful here. I mean, obviously you have support here. I like this long term. I don't have anywhere near the volume that would interest me in this right now. Um, kind of a left shoulder, head, right shoulder kind of thing. I, I don't know that that's something I'd be playing with right now. I like it long term, but I just don't see the volume or anything there. NYCB, we have a position in I've done exceptionally well with. Uh, to me, it's very clear that you're going to go to 1415 and get back there. Um, we're in right around eight and a half. We've done nothing with it. Nothing. I mean, it's this, this, this and uh, FC and CA, these are just home runs. I mean, as soon as this pulled back like 10%, it's got the heck bought out of it, right? Now it's up $100 already. I mean, this is just going to be a monster. Wait till next earnings and people start seeing these earnings. They're going to, they're going to wonder what, they, what they're doing, what the heck they did and why they didn't just buy it here and leave it alone. Candidly, I mean, that's what people are going to just wonder what the heck they're doing. SQ, worth a look. Let's take a look. SQ. Um, yeah, it's not really my kind of trade. I mean, you got to get up here, fill in that wick. I mean, you're about $2 from a gap fill. It could go. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely getting volume in there, isn't it? Right? But I don't know. I don't know that I want to buy that for two bucks and then just see how it does. Mm. You see islands. It's like that movie, I See Dead People. Everybody remember that movie? Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely there. You had one here where you have a bullish island reversal. You have one here. You have a continuation island. You have the reversal here. You have the reversal here. Um, are they reversals? I don't know yet. I tell you, I tell you, your issue with it now is all you did was gap fill, and all you did was gap fill, right? So you did on both sides of that. So do you have a reversal? Yeah, I don't know. I would say no, if I had to tell you that. I don't know that we do have that reversal pattern yet. Yeah, I don't think the uh, MSTR is expensive. Levels on ES I went over. Um, I can go over them again, Bill, real quick. But this is how I would view ES. That's how I view it right there. So you could screenshot it, but that's, that's how I view it. And that's how, I, and actually this should be a little bit lower. Sorry. This should be right there. Um, but that's how I view it right now. And, you know, we'll see, see what happens with it. Uh, yeah. I like Bitcoin steam a lot, Jay. Hey, Claudia. Um, Microsoft, I like a lot. I don't know that now is the time with the rebalancing on what we're seeing going on out there. I'm not sure that now is the time to get into that with that rebalancing. I'm not really like when I start doing, oh, apologies. Uh, when I start doing this kind of stuff, I put the brakes on. When I start like rolling through my key levels, the 12, the 22, which are more short term to intermediate term indicators for me. If I look at my short-term indicators, I can't go near this with a 10-foot pole, right? I, you know, the, the three, the five, the eight, they're pointing down, they crossed. I need to get through this before I would even consider it, you know. And really, it's been an EKG chart up here if you take a look at it. Like, if I got rid of all my lines, you really want to buy that? I mean, maybe you hold here. Maybe it holds. But... I don't know that I'm going to be a buyer of something of, of a maybe unless you're day trading it. If you're day trading it, maybe. Other than that, I don't know that I'd go near it. Netflix makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, Netflix makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that'll continue. Now, if we go to let's pull this up and just use that, get rid of this nine. And what I like about Netflix is this. Rallies, comes back, tries to rally again, stops, but doesn't break. So that I like. And it looks to me like this is going to be the first level, 456. And then it looks like you're just going to fill right into here to 508. I mean, it really looks like that's what's going to happen here. It's still nothing but just rip since what? Since July. It was the first to fall, first to rally. And it's done exceptional off of that. You know, absolutely exceptional. So, uh, ZS and Sophie. Yeah, there was an upgrade the other day in this. Um, yesterday, it was an upgrade. I think that's why it moved the way that it did. And they were talking about how this it's completely misunderstood, blah, blah, blah. I, I have to go and reread re it to be candid with you. I mean, you got you to get through there, man. No matter how you look at it, that's your issue, right? No matter how you look at it, there's your issue. And I mean, that led to that. So, and you rejected it again. So whoever's there, they're still there. So that's the area I would watch. Yeah, you're welcome, Claudia. Sophie, and let's go from there. Um, yeah, this ruling... It was so fascinating because people are like, oh, this ruling is going to be great. And uh, you know, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know how much was baked into that ruling. I like that you're holding here. Um, you're holding that level. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that I need to be involved there. I, I don't really have any volume. I don't really have anyone paying attention to it. So, I mean, maybe, maybe I've bottomed. Maybe. You know, we'll have to say. All right. I'm out of here, guys. Remember, CPI tomorrow.